Orenthal James Simpson, America's favorite double murderer, is dead. And he is as guilty today as he was then. There is no doubt about it. Nobody even discusses it. Nobody suggests it. Nothing. All of the folks who were jumping up and down and screaming and yelling and applauding and hooting and hollering over the fact that he would. No. No. Everybody, and I mean everybody, knows he's guilty. The case was one of the most fascinating cases ever. Ever. And I want to just go and 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 maybe remind you of why it was different. And we'll learn a little bit about why how we're different today by virtue of what we were then. There was no internet then, no, no avalanche of information. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready, strap in. We're gonna have one hell of a time tonight on this rainy and dark and dank, cold New York night. And I'm so glad you're here. Sit back, get ready. Warm up a Pop-Tart, pop a top off of that PBR, and let's get weird, okay? Now, first of all, you must, you must right off the bat, subscribe. Make sure you're subscribing. If you're not subscribed, I don't know what to tell you. Also, make sure you hit that little like button, and you also hit the bell, the notification bell, so that you'll be notified of live streams and new videos. But before we begin, let me tell you about this critical, 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 critical special that's only going on this week, and you must listen because it's from our great friends at preparewithlionel.com. It's no longer a question of if something is coming, it's when. The only shock, the what, the how. While you still have some control, what are you going to do about it? Well, the first step is to go to my website, at preparewithlionel.com. The next step is stocking up on multiple one-week emergency food kits from my Patriot Supply. Priced at under $50, now's the time to buy in bulk. My Patriot Supply is equipped to help you prepare. They've helped over 2 million families already. These one-week kits with Ready Hour Foods provide over 2,000 calories every day. And they're sealed inside a rugged ammo can so they can last to up to 25 years in storage. So just grab it and go in emergencies. Get these kits for under $50 this week only at preparewithlionel.com. That's preparewithlionel.com. All right, dear friends, let me get uh, a, 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 a position here. This was 30 years ago, roughly, that the, that the, uh, that the murders took place on June 12th. 1994, 30 years ago. Think about that, 30 years ago. Were, who was there? Who is old enough to remember? Who, listening, who right now remembers this? Just to give you an idea, because I was talking to a, a, a young, oh my God, there's this, I always think people know what I know, and I'm talking about OJ. She must have been 20 years old. She's at the store. I'm thinking, what, what am I even talking about? She didn't know who the hell this guy is. This was this was like the Lindbergh case. It's the Lindbergh case. It it's it's Bonnie and Clyde. You don't have to be alive to know what happened. I was 35 years old. I was at WABC. I has I had just 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 started my brand new uh, position. I I I I was going crazy doing my thing, and I, I I was it was the greatest thing in the world. And the first thing I want you to understand is why it's important. First, number one, he was guilty. He killed these two people. Nobody else did, but sometimes. There may be a flaw in the evidence. Oh, guess what? They mixed. We found some of Ron Goldman's blood in his truck. We found Nicole's blood on a sock. We found some of OJ's blood there. Huh? But maybe the blood was mixed. Maybe it was contaminated. Okay. Let's assume there was no blood. This is the evidence. It, it, you, you've, you've got to ask yourself. What evidence is there other than, you know, he killed them. 
It was one of the best cases ever. There was blood and the blood was it and the glove was it. And if you take that away, you give this jury that was basically going to say, we're going to want to quit this guy. I was watching scenes from uh, various black communities. They were honking and howling and yipping and yaying and hoorraying. And I mean, they could not, but they were having the time of their life. They were loving this. It was the greatest thing ever. Why? I have no idea. What does a guilty man's acquittal have to do with anything? And I will tell you, because they hated the LAPD. They hated it. And they wanted to make sure that O.J. Simpson was acquitted. They didn't want another Rodney King riot. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah. They wanted another riot. They didn't care. This happened in Santa Monica. What the hell are they doing in downtown LA with this? I think there was like one Caucasian lady on the whole thing. They wanted a black jury. They wanted, and damn it, they wanted an acquittal and they got it. And if they had gone to Santa Monica, they wouldn't have believed this bullshit in the first place. They would have said, we're not going to. But here is the thing, and this is why it's so good as a lawyer. What happens when you know the guy did it, but you can't prove it? It's not who did it. He did it. He's the only person who did it. Some, sometimes there are cases where there, you know who did it. Casey Anthony. Everybody knows she killed her kid. But you can't prove it. Because there was no evidence of it. They found a skull, this poor little kid's skull. But there was no bullet hole in it. There was nothing. It was just, and you've got to prove homicide. Remember, remember the four types of murder, four types, excuse me, of homicide, of a death rather, excuse me, um, natural, accidental, suicide, homicide. You don't understand this thing. He did it. There's nobody else. There's nobody else. And I, as a juror, if you if you convince me, if you said, listen, this, this blood is awful, I'd have to acquit too because there's no evidence, even though I know he did it. But I'm not playing a, I'm not playing a, uh, I'm not playing a, uh, a, 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 a detective. I'm playing a juror. Does that make sense to you? It was, let me explain something to you. This is the most important part. We didn't have the internet then. Do you know what I'm saying? We didn't have the internet. We didn't have anything. It was the greatest time to be in radio. I'm doing morning drive on WABC. That's it. And then later on, you could, maybe you could, you might want to catch something on, I guess, Core TV or maybe, I, I, I guess. I guess core TV or something, maybe, sort of, may. And then a little bit at night, and then you could see maybe Geraldo or some core TV, some Nancy Grace. It was a brand new, it, it was completely brand new. But this is the part that's the most important. Listen to what I'm saying. What was so great about it was that you only had this. Special hello to Mower Man. Thank you so much. Mower Man is a, is a new member. And Norma Lutz, or Lutz, as we say in Hillsborough County. Thank you so much to your friends. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I don't know if you youngins are old enough to remember this. You see, today, you're bombarded with so much news, you're in a fog. You, you're, you, there, there's, just too, there's just too much information. There's too much information. You could talk about crime. You could talk about shoplifting. You could talk about Israel. You could talk about Biden. You could talk about Biden. You could talk about Trump. Trump's trials, the eclipse, or this or that. I mean, just just write down all, write down all of the various stories, and you find yourself unable to say, "Wait a minute, what? 
But then we had maybe one story. This was the story. That was it. It was wonderful. I mean, there were some other stories too, but it was, we never had anything. But remember, it's not a who done it. It's how do they prove it? We know who did it. He did it. He killed them. He killed them. And you know, and the characters, that sleazy Robert Kardashian, sleazy, slimy. Oh, God. Even after the case, he's giving up everybody. Well, Bob Shapiro thought OJ did it. Shut up. Why are you telling people this? Now, let me explain something to you once, so that you understand this. I'm a defense lawyer. And if somebody came to me and said, would you take this case? How much you paying? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Bob, I think Bob Shapiro got a million dollars. I don't know who the way how OJ had this money from a million dollars. And, 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 and Shapiro wanted to plead him out. I'll do it for a million dollars. Sure. And do I know he's guilty? Absolutely. First thing I do is I sit down with OJ. I said, anybody here? Yeah, I said, now, first of all, OJ, I want you to listen to me. I'm not asking you whether you did it. I don't want to know whether you did it. I want you to just shut up. I don't care what you did. This isn't about you, OJ. I don't care what you did. I don't care if you did it. There are some things. A serial rapist? Oh, yeah. Not interested. I don't care how much money you got. OJ Simpson? Eh, different story. He the pastor is not going to happen again. Brutal. Terrible. But let's see if they can prove it. And that's one of the things, because if you're a, if you're a lawyer, you take cases that are interesting to you. If you're a priest, you listen to people and you hear their confession or you, or, or if you're a doctor, you, you're in an emergency room, you, you take care of bad people and whatever. Your job is not to, to be the judge. Your job is to ask yourself, can I be zealous? Can I represent this guy? Can I do a good job? Yeah. Okay. And sometimes it's interesting. People representing representing mobsters are they guilty? Goddamn right, they're guilty. It doesn't matter. You everybody deserves a a, a a day in court. Even serial killers, even serial rapists, even child killers. I'm not into that though because I have to be able to say that I can represent the client um, um, zealously, and I won't be able to do that zealously if you did something to a kid. I can't. But see, what O.J. Simpson did was he didn't realize he went over there. He, he was going to slice her tires or something. There was a guy years ago named Keith Zlomzowicz. This was a guy who owned the Mezzaluna. And he had like two or three of them. And Mezzaluna is a restaurant they went to. And they they went to at the time, at, at the at the event that this occurred. And they went there with with a, with a whole party, Nicole, and it was somebody's birthday or Christmas. I don't know what the hell it was, but it was something, graduation. It was, I think it was graduation. Anyway, there was all the Denise Brown was there. And they told OJ, beat it. What? Beat it. And OJ said, God damn it. I'm paying all these people. I give him all this money. And he's feeling he's feeling really crummy. Paula Barbieri, let's kind of give him the heave-ho. Do you know how, how do, do, do you know... This was racism. It's not racism. It's race. Get it through your head. Don't ask what this. Forget DEI. This is just he's a black dude, and we're all for him because we want to see a black guy win against uh, these white corrupt cops. That's it. You got a problem with that? So what? That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. When they had this, they had the jury come over to OJ's house. They moved all the pictures out of his white pictures, the nude Paula Barbieri, the this and that. They had pictures of, you know, Norman Rockwell, the little black girl walking to school, and they had African stuff. I mean, it's complete nonsense. But this is what they did. And Johnny Cochran knew just what to do. It's the way it is. It's the way it is. So they came in, oh, look at this nice house. Oh, look at all the nice house. Oh, what a brother. You know what they call each other? Brother. He's a good brother. <laughs> O.J. Simpson. I'm, I'm blacker than, than O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson had nothing to do with the black community. But it doesn't matter. That's exactly what it was. It was it was so, my God, it was the most incredible thing in the world. And, 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 and the bottom line is simply this. 
people people would say, look, as in the case of John Gotti, a lot of people would say, you know what? I don't know. I'm sure he's guilty, but you know what? I kind of like the guy. Remember during Gotti's trials, Anthony Quinn was there. Mickey Rourke showed up. Uh, I think, uh, was it not Marlon Brando? I mean, a lot of people just like them. You know, them. Nothing wrong with that. And a lot of people, most people said, you know, as far as OJ says, well, he is what he is, but I kind of like him. But he killed him. And I mean, he killed him with a knife and he was out of his mind. And they said he was on meth or crank or amphetamines or coke or whatever it was. And there was there was somebody who said, yeah, I used to go on a, I think I even took the Beckley or something. There was a Burger King. He was out of his mind. And there was this one, I was watching this old, our good friend, Charles Grodin. What a great guy. There was a woman at 10 something, whatever. She remembers 1050. She's going to get something to eat. She goes to the, whatever it is. And all of a sudden there's this OJ. He didn't have his lights on. He's honking. People are getting out of the way. He was a madman. Getting away from the murder scene. Getting away from the murder scene. And there he is at the time. Is that OJ? Of course that's OJ. Eh, eh. What the hell's going on? Hey, that's OJ Simpson. Don't you think that would have been good information? Yes, I certainly do too. But they kept that out. Why? Because they didn't think that they thought maybe her 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 um her credibility would be affected. And I would have said very, very simply, we're keeping her on from the prosecutor. And by the way, I said, ma'am, yes. Uh, do 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 were, were you gonna be offered the money? Yeah. Why? Because you saw it. Because you saw it. Shapiro's getting paid. I'm getting paid. The judge is getting paid. Everybody's making money off of this, but you can't. The only way you're going to be paid by hard copy or whatever the hell it is, is because if you saw it. But this stupid Marsha Clark, they stuttered her. She said, I'm not going to do that. She had no jury appeal. I would have kept this thing so simple. They just confused. The jurors kept saying, give us something and we'll acquit them. DNA, good enough. What about good enough? Okay, just listen. All right. And they're talking about the alleles and the base pairs, and they don't know what the hell you're talking about. They said, can we acquit him yet? No, not yet. Okay, all right. He was in jail for 15 months. He was being held. Do you know that he was such a baby? They actually paid a woman in Kardashian's law office to go and be with him every day, just like keep him company, like babysit him. And you had to get a lawyer to go talk. I mean, this, this, this guy... He had it all, just like Bogey and Bacall. He was it. People loved him. He looked like an athlete. Black, I don't know, a black folk or something. He, he was, I mean, as far as football prowess, he was the best. And he looked, I mean, they loved him. Remember he sold Dingo Boost? Remember Dingo's? Remember the Hertz commercials? He did the uh, uh, um, Naked Gun series. It's wonderful. Every single day, I remember this case. And I used to go out and do stand-up comedy and just basically do a repeat of the trial. I sounded kind of like Lenny Bruce. And it was so, it, it was so, because what I did was I saw the absurd part of it. The whole thing was, parts of it were just absurd. It was just absurd. And people were saying, how is this happening? And I'm saying, sometimes you know somebody did it, but you can't prove it. If you're sitting there in court and you see somebody who's the murderer, he's, and there's this real creepy guy who's murdered people before, and he's like this. <laughs> and you know he killed that little girl. And he said, <laughs> And he told everybody, I hate that little girl. But there's no evidence. There's no nothing. And he was around the area and he knew him and he knew her. And he was creeping him around. And every and it's like you say, I know he didn't. But there's no evidence. Can you, could you as a juror do that? If you as a juror said, could you do that? Yes or no? Could you do that? It's the hardest thing in the world. If you said, how do I find him guilty? There's no evidence. But you know he did it. But there's no evidence. Could you do that? I could. Now, this is a criminal trial. Civil case, completely different. Oh, he, I saw, I was there in the in the, in the civil case. He's so guilty. It's, it's not, because he had to take the stand. And he's such a liar. He's glib and he's, 
Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? When you're saying you're stabbing somebody two in a row, two, and you just this Ron Goldman, he didn't have a chance. He stuck him like this, and they like lifted him up. There was this little area there from the walkway, this area where you you couldn't. I mean, you you. Uh, how do I say this? You. There was no room for him to get out. He was just penned in. He was a sitting duck. And OJ was huge, big, strong guy, just so young, forty-seven years old, and just sticking him and lifting him up like a roast. Somebody said, "Just, he just this guy had puncture wounds. He was a mess. This kid didn't have a chance. He was just room." And he, I think he had the bloody glasses because he was retrieving the glasses that the mother left because he was the waiter at Mezzalona and he brought him back. And see, what happened was O.J. remembers this because this guy's Lamza, which supposedly was the one who did this. She was, Nicole was doing the chicken hit on him years ago. And O.J. saw it. O.J. saw it. Saw it. And didn't do anything. In fact, later on, he says, well, if I'm such a bad, got such a bad temper, if you think I'm, if, if I killed Ron Goldman because I'm what, I'm jealous, I didn't kill Lamza, which I'm looking in the window and I'm seeing my ex-wife in my house doing the nasty Interesting, but I never really got into the trial. And he walked, he he showed up. He probably confronted her. And they he said, Wait, what are you doing? He's got the hat on because he's doing a show, a show called Frogmen, or yeah, I think it was called Frogman at the time. Uh I've been today was like going back into all my my days. OJ Frog. Man, movie. This is the movie he was doing. It's called Frogman. And it was, there we go, Frogman. That's it. On former Navy SEAL leader leads his elite team to Costa Rica to rescue his ex wife's husband. Frogman, 1994, starring Robert O.J. Simpson. I don't know any of these names. This was the movie, Navy SEAL. And all day long, OJ's on the set all day long talking to Navy SEALs, trying to impress them, and he's trying to impress their OJ back and forth. And all he's talking about is knives, 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 throat. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the Maz attack. Johnny Maz is back. Judge Lance Edo, favorite line, let's go to the sidebar. Curtis Lewis spoke very highly about you in his talk show today. He said you were the only one on the radio who knew everything about the OJ case. Well, that's very, very nice. That's very, very nice. I lived it. I loved it. It was the most incredible thing in the world. It was the most wonderful thing. It was, it was the most every single day. People said, what happened? What do you think happened? I told you I got a call when I was very, uh, I really got to know very well, um, Charles Grove. There was no, there was no internet. Charles Groden said, I, I, he heard me because Jack Parr told him to listen to me. And I, we, we got to be buddies and I would go on and I'd say, let me at it. And he, and he, and Groden was, oh, good evening. How are you? We had that kind of a mouth like that. And he always, we, we were at Fort Lee at the CNBC studio. I think it was called America's Talking or something. And Groden always had a little mirror in his pocket and always looking at It's very good. I, I learned a lot. He always knew what he looked like. He said, and we start off with this monologue, and you'd always look off here. And one time I, I came on and I said, I said, who the hell are you looking at? What is it? When you start off the monologue, the camera's here, and you're always looking down. I said, what is it? Is somebody down there? Anyway, he's a good guy. But nobody, nobody could, I said, he killed him. He's getting away. This is called an escape. What the hell's the matter with you people? He wasn't, he wasn't, <laughs> he's in the car, and he's, and he's not going to kill himself. He has what? A gun? $10,000? Because he was grieving? He was going to try to get on a boat with his passport. He was going to try to take off as he killed him. What's the matter with you people? And Groden loved it. And I told you, it was on with that Tavis Smiley. When Tavis Smiley was like, you know, he took OJ's side. I said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I understand, you you know, the whole civil rights thing. Okay, fine. But OJ Simpson, come on. And that's the way it was. That's that's the way it was. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
There's a great show on PBS American Masters called Moynihan. Moynihan was arguing DEI before anybody did. Moynihan was arguing DEI and Lyndon Johnson in 64. Absolutely. Moynihan was also suggesting that anybody who's anti-Zionist is anti-Semitic in 75 at the, at the UN. Nothing's, nothing we see here is new. That's the beautiful part about it. The more I learn, and the more I see, the more I realize everything just keeps, it's, it's just, a, it, it just recirculates. It wasn't racism, but black people then, I don't know about now, it was that simple, said, I hate the LAPD. And if you, white folks, want OJ to lose, I want him to win. It's that simple. That simple. Everybody was like so hard. To, they, they had such a, the, the hardest time understanding that. They had such a hard time. It's like, it's not personal. It's the way it is. Julie Ann says, Lino, thank you for all your OJ analysis. Throughout the years, you taught me so much about the case. Sending best witches from London. Julie Ann, thank you. And as you say in London, thank you. By the way, London's the only two places, well, Three, three places I want to go. I only want to go four. Fran well, Paris, sort of, but not not that little thing. That London, definitely. I want to go. I also want to go to Newcastle. Got to see my, my Geordie folks. I don't know why I love the, love the Geordies. And um, maybe not Rome, but some something rustic Italian. But thank you very much for that. See, I, I think lawyers have the, the affirmative duty to explain to you this stuff. To explain. And one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what do you tell somebody? For example, they said, well, you know, we found OJ's blood in the Bronco. I told you this this morning. I don't know if you heard this, but somebody used to tell me all the time. Well, um, during the case, somebody said, uh, Years ago, why wasn't there more blood in the Bronco? That was my favorite. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Well, shouldn't there have been more blood in the Bronco? So why was there any blood in the Bronco? What are you talking about? Well, there's not enough? Well, I think there should have been. What are you talking? So anyway, one time we had this fellow on when I was at WABC. And they had this, he came out and there was this, a doctor from an emergency room. And he, and he, and he said that, when you stab somebody a bunch of times, your blood pressure can drop. So much so that when you cut a throat, it just kind of dribbles. There's no pressure. There's no blood pressure because you've been stabbed all the internal bleeding. So I would love to say, so let me get this straight. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the blood was planted. Are you telling me that they went to the scene of the crime. They said, whose blood is that? That's uh, that's Nicole's blood. Get some of the blood. Get some of this here. Give me, give me some of this blood. Put it on this. Put it on this thing here. Okay, good, good. Now, stick some of this in the car. Mix it up. Why? Just so that will... What? So you really think... That you, you So they, they were saying because they cross-contaminated it. Cross-contaminated it. They got some of uh, Nicole's blood at the crime scene may have been mixed with the sample of the blood that was found in the truck, and the two were. So let me get this. Remember, you remember the old joke that said, "You got chocolate on my peanut butter. You got peanut butter on my chocolate." It was Reese's cups or whatever. So you got her blood and mine. You're kidding me. So, so you think? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is my closing argument. If you believe, if you have a reasonable doubt, meaning that OJ's blood, oh, where did OJ's blood come from again? Okay, I understand her blood and I understand his blood. 
well, where's OJ's blood? How come, what is he bleeding? Remember that when he said his finger, remember that? This guy could remember everything, but I could remember. OJ, where would you cut your hand? Um, let me tell you something. It's very common for people to cut themselves during stabbings. If you, you, you can cut yourself, you know how when you're chopping, you got to turn your, your finger, you know, you, you can screw that up. So ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me ask you again, where the hell did OJ's blood come from? Huh? <clears throat> Do you know that right now when you all leave, unless something happens, there is no evidence of your blood on these seats. Why? Because you're not bleeding. Why is OJ bleeding? Because he had a knife because he was killing these people. And that's why his blood. I'll give you the, let's say, you know what, let, let, let's just assume this is a big mistake. This OJ Simpson, what an unlucky son of a bitch. First of all, he gets pinned with this murder. He doesn't know. I don't know what the hell happened. I'm not doing anything. I'm at home just pitching golf balls or going to sleep. What was that? Yeah, Johnny Cochran said he was waiting. He was waiting in, uh, wait. No, he, he was in the back. He was in the backyard. Right, whatever, pitching golf balls at eleven o'clock at night. Why? Because I got to. I got to practice this. I my 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 sand wedge in the back. I got to practice now. Eleven o'clock at night. I'm gonna go to the airport. And fly on a red eye to Chicago. But before I go, I want to go. Pit. And then they, then Johnny said, nah, that's bullshit. So then he says, oh, I know what it was. He was sleeping. He's sleeping before a red eye? Let me get this straight. You sleep on the plane. You don't sleep before you go. You don't sit there like this, wide awake. Because like, what's the matter? I shouldn't have slept. That story doesn't make. So O.J. Simpson's at home one night. And all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. He's in Chicago. He's in Chicago. And they call him up. This is my this is my favorite. They said, OJ, yeah, this is so and so. I got bad news. Your ex-wife was murdered. He never asks which one. He's got two. His first wife, I forgot her name, Ag Agadita, whatever her name is. And they call. He never says which one. Don't you think that makes sense? Isn't that weird? Isn't that strange? Oh, huh. I'll be a son of a gun. Really? Phew. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I guess I'll come back now. Yeah, that's it. And he supposedly said, well, where, how come you cut your hand? Because he grabbed the glass. He was so angry with the glass. I was like, God damn it. My wife, I love to you know, cut. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll buy that. So how come you got your blood in the Bronco again? You were in Chicago. How did you get blood in the Bronco? How did all this happen? How come all these people, oh, I forgot, I'm sorry, they mixed the blood. And how come you've got Nicole's blood on your sock? I know, that was mixed. Boy, when those F, when those LAPDs guys screw up. John McGuire couldn't get higher, says, as a golfer, I can attest that many of us keep a dozen balls in the backyard, and yes, we will practice chipping at very odd times. Oh, would you please stop? Would you please stop? How dare you? Don't even insult my intelligence. And you're not going to be chipping balls in the back, especially when you just kill two people. Stop it. Please, at night, in the dark. I'm going to go outside. I got to, I got to, please, for the love of God, don't even insult our intelligence. How dare you? <laughs> that is pretty good, though. But OJ, how'd you get the, how'd you get the thing? In the, I don't know. OJ says, you're not gonna believe this shit. Man, when I have like I'm 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 in Chicago, they call me. I come back and they want to arrest me. Why? Because because somebody killed Nicole. What did I do about it? Why what why me? Well, there was this car that said she saw you. Oh, okay, well, whatever. This is my favorite. I and I love this. You know, when you're in a case like this, sometimes little facts mean the most. Remember in that, remember in um in Glorious Bastards? Remember when he says, how many? He says, three or two versus three or whatever. He 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 holds up his fingers the American way and not the remember that way. Little things, little things. Alan Park was the limo driver. Alan Park was the guy who said, Hey, guess what? You're gonna pick up OJ Simpson. Really? OJ, the OJ? This is great. All right, I'll do it. And he's got one of those long, remember those stretches, those long, ugly things? Remember those long, 
very unsafe, those stretch limos, you know, those long ones. So Alan Park wanted to see whether he could negotiate that turn. Because it's, you know, when you're driving the, when you're driving this thing, he said, plus I want to get there early. I want to make sure I get there in time. This is OJ Simpson. I'm going to pick him up the juice and I'm going to make sure that I you know, get there early. And can, can I even drive through the thing and turn around? So he drives through once. And as he goes past OJ's estate, there's no Bronco there. All the cars are inside locked up in this gate. The Bentley, the other one, they're all inside. He drives around, but the second time he comes, or the third, whatever it was, he comes back, there's a Bronco parked at an angle. He didn't check the, I don't think he checked the temperature. And all of a sudden, there it is. And he looks, and he sees this dark figure. And they said, do you know who it was? He goes, oh, I don't know who it was. It was a kind of a big guy. Could it be a woman? Well, I guess. And by today's standards, it could be a they, for all we know. But what he did was, when O.J. Simpson shows up, he says, oh, shit, I've got to get back. This limo driver's here. Here I am. I got blood on me. And I got to, I just, <laughs> he's all cranked up, whatever he's, whatever they say, I don't know. But it kind of makes sense. On the side of the house, there was a fence. And there was, of course, this this guest cottage or guest building, whatever. And then there's this little area, but they have, an air conditioning in the window or bracketed or something. And OJ's running and he knocks right into it, almost takes it off the, I mean, just OJ running, hits this thing. And Cato Kalen's inside. He says, it sounds like an earthquake. He goes, what the hell is that? It was OJ getting back right in time, right in time. OJ goes around all of a sudden, this dark figure moves. And next thing you know, lights go on. And Alan Park had been outside. Eh, eh, all of a sudden, hello. Oh, I'll be with you. Be with you in a minute. And they found that OJ was doing some laundry. OJ doing laundry? Think about it. And not a big load, just a couple of socks. And come on, please. But is that enough to 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 uh, convict? Probably not. What does that mean? I don't know. Were there other people coming home at that same time in the area? Probably. Other people who could have been there? Probably. But none of those people had Nicole's blood, Ron's blood, and OJ's blood in their truck and on their sock and on their clothes. Oh, I know. I forgot. Cross-contamination. Excuse me. I forgot. See, I would mock that. I would keep saying, oh, I forgot. I forgot because there's because somehow the, the cross-contamination fairies kind of came along. Can you say fairies anymore? Probably not. Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless you and yours. Do me a great favor right now. I'm going to just take one little second to thank one of our great, great sponsors, the lovely, the talented, the extreme. By the way, the, 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 these pictures are no good. You got to go to MyPillow.com. Promo code Lionel or MyPillow.com slash Lionel and see for yourself. But just just listen to this. Well, it's time yet again to hail and salute our great friends at MyPillow.com. And if you use promo code Lionel, you get a free gift. No purchase necessary. I know, I know, a free gift. Gifts are free. Okay, it's a tautology, so sue me. But listen to me and listen carefully. What are we talking about here? Down comforters, flannel sheets, Giza Dream bed sheets, my pillow 2.0, body pillows, waffle blankets, couch and recliner pillows, sheets, slippers, percales. I'm not even done yet. Towels, quilts, bedspreads, mattresses, mattress covers, mattress toppers, linens, kitchen towels, bathrobes, pet blankets, pet blankets, bolster pillows, name it. Items to help you luxuriate and relax. And they're monster sellers, slippers, my slippers, slip-ons, moccasins. Think about it. What do they do at my pillow? What's their main goal? To make things real soft, plush, real comfy, comfy, or comfy as I say it. How perfect. So here's the link right now. Go to mypillow.com slash Lionel. Mypillow.com, promo code Lionel or slash Lionel, or call 800-645-4965. 800 645 4965 
And watch how fast our good friend Mike Lindell answers the phone. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, simply and absolutely the best. Great days those were 30 years ago. 30 years ago, and I keep thinking about all of the days and Oh my God, it was just so, I, 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 it was my, how do I say this? It was not a calling, but it was, it was something that said, you know, this is kind of fun pointing things out. Since then, I've told people what I thought about the truth. And by the way, I thought at the time there was some very, very serious Remember, when, 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 when I was saying that OJ's guilty, it doesn't mean they're going to find him guilty. George Zimmerman, remember Trayvon Martin? I pissed off more people when I said the first time, it was on TV, the first day of this, I said, they're going to find him not guilty. Because people always think that when you say there's going to be a reasonable doubt, that somehow you're siding with him, that you're thinking, I don't think it was a big deal that you killed this poor little kid. It's not that way at all. Doesn't work like that. And in the case of Anthony, I said they're going to find her not guilty because they, they didn't have any evidence. They found a skull. You can't, this isn't, I mean, this is, I'm, I'm not trying to be a downer here, but that's just the way it goes. There's this, but being guilty of something is a different story. People get very upset when they say, well, What do you think about Donald Trump? You're going to find him guilty? Yes. <laughs> is he guilty? If the jury says so, it's 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 complete chicken shit. This this thing coming up Monday, I don't even know. I still don't understand it. I don't understand. So he called it the wrong thing. He did you see that picture of or that that document that Donald Trump posted on Truth Social of of Dusty Saddles or whatever saying, "Well, I he we never had some." Okay, I'm not going to get into that. Again. This is one of those things that are absolutely. Um, oh, what do I say? It's just fascinating. You know, I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine you're a night guard, a night watchman, and you have 10 cameras, 10 monitors. You've got 10 rooms from when you enter the museum. Let's say it's a museum. Room number one, monitor number one. Room number two, monitor two. And you look, and you see this guy moving across. But monitor three is not working, and monitor six is not working. So you see one, two, dark, four, but dark. But he keeps moving. And you're able to say, it's the same guy. It, it, it's I guess it's circumstantial. I can see what's happening. I'm not, I, I'm not stupid. I would have had a very difficult time. I mean, I could have done this. I find him not guilty. I do not have a reasonable doubt. I do not believe, put it this way. Remember, just because Barry Sheck is Barry Sheck or Michael Bodden or Peter Newfeld, whoever these people are, they they it, it doesn't mean that you have to believe them. You might say, I don't believe them. I don't believe any of these people. So I'm going to exclude their defense, and find O.J. guilty. I can do that, too. It's kind of like a reverse nullification, so to speak. John Wolf says, Alan Dershowitz said today, the sock with O.J.'s blood and victims had the stuff you put in a test tube to, to keep, oh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the victim had the test tube uh, to keep the blood from clotting. There was a... There's a, there's a surfactant that is added, which in not all of it, but there was indication of either sloppiness, the surfactant, it's the, it's the substance in the vial that keeps the blood from clotting. So, Alan, what? He's not guilty? Is that what you're saying? I, as a juror, could say, oh, that's very interesting. I don't think it in any way affects. I think O.J. Simpson did it. I think they proved it. That's good enough for me, beyond a reasonable doubt. What do you mean? 
That's what a reasonable doubt is to me. Now, an appellate court could say, that's ridiculous. Do I have a real doubt? Do I have a reasonable doubt that OJ did this? No. <laughs> Do I have a doubt in the LAPD's evidence gathering? Yes. Does that affect my guilty verdict? No. No. Not really. It's like if somebody finds, if somebody's a cocaine trafficker and you're saying, you know the guy who tests the cocaine? The field reagent test, the Valtox test they used, actually hit it expired. And the certificate, mm-hmm, you're done? Yeah, okay, great. Don't worry about it. That's cocaine. That's the way to stop it. He's Escobar. Let's cut this. I can do that. As a juror, I could do that. And OJ was... O.J. was so, he didn't know how to stop this. He and that Judith Regan. Judith Regan. Remember that one? Remember who Judith Regan was? Judith Regan was, um, do you remember Judith Regan was the woman... Remember she had the messy affair with Bernie Carrick? Remember that one? Remember that story where they had, during 9-11, there was this, oh, Judith Reed. You don't hear about it anymore. She was like Miss, Miss um, Publishing. And she was that book. Remember the story? This was... There was a story that says something about, well, I don't want to go through the tawdry affair, but there was a story. <clears throat> they had an affair, and I think they were supposedly, their love twist was at a place that they were using for 9-11 people or some, whatever. Bernie Carrick suffered enough. But O.J. Simpson came up with a book later on that said, if I did it, and I said it should be called, if I did it again, because he did it. He absolutely did. And what was it that O.J. Simpson was caught on? The the robbery. That's what they got him on. The robbery. And I would have loved to sit there and just sit there and say, O.J., tell me the truth. Because I got so much into this. You had to go, didn't you, that night? You had to go. You had to go. You were just going crazy. You were obsessing over this stuff. You're 47 years old. Paula Barbieri. Remember that one? Playboy model? She, even she doesn't want you. I mean, how bad can you be? Come on. And then your family, they're all having fun. And that uh, that Brown family, because you set Lou up in that Hertz business. I mean, OJ was like the sugar daddy. And then when they don't need OJ anymore, screw you. So he's getting tired of this. Plus, plus he might be doing some of this and who knows. So he figures, I got some time. I wonder who she's seeing tonight. I wonder who's seeing tonight. Was it grassroots? Anyway, goes over there, puts his cap on, puts that wool cap on. Why? Why? They're going to say, hey, look, there's O.J. Simpson with a wool cap. What's the matter with him? It's not, not even hot, cold. And he puts the gloves on. The gloves? What do you wear the gloves for? It's not even, what's the matter with you? He's got the knife. What do you do with the knife? Because he was making that movie all the time. Knives are on his head. Thinking knives, knives, knives. What are you doing with a knife? You're crazy. It's nuts. Puts the cap on. He's lurking around. He wasn't there to go kill her. That's not what he wanted to do. I don't think it was premeditated in that respect. But you wonder, what the hell is this guy doing? And believe it or not, this this kind of a wild, kind of a manic, druggy kind of behavior is, is consistent with the way he acted. Shows up. Sees her. Say, what are you doing? Candles. Damn it. She's running a bath. Damn it. The kids aren't there. What are you doing here? F you, F you. And all of a sudden, poor, poor Ron Goldman, who probably walked up and says, Hey, you're old Jay Simpson. You know, and he's just, What? I mean, it's so fast. And your your adrenaline is running, and 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 you it takes a while. You don't you don't die right away. It takes a while. It's not on the TV like you stab one time and they fall and they're dead. This is not, and they're fighting. And I want you, if you can, I don't know if you want to, maybe it's not your thing, but murder pictures have always fascinated me. They tell me, they tell me the whole story. They tell me everything. 
because you can't understand what this guy, you can't look at him until you see what he did to his daughter, his daughter, his uh, ex-wife, the mother of his children. You can't believe what he did. You can't, you can't put it into perspective. You can't put it into, uh, into words. You can't, uh, you have to see the scene. Now, I mentioned this before to you, and I'm going to say it again. How does OJ get out of this? How could he? What could he have done? Imagine this scene. As crazy as this is, imagine this. He gets done doing this. He realizes, oh, my God, I lost my mind. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, well. Picks up a phone. Hello, 911. Yeah, get a car over here to Bundy, whatever the address is here. This is OJ Simpson. You may have heard of me. My ex wife, Nicole, and some guy are here and they look like they've been, they're shot or I, I, I don't know what. Don't say they were stabbed because how do you know if they were stabbed? But this is terrible. Get somebody here now. I, I think they're dead, but I can't tell. He waits. He hears in the background. Meow. He shows up. OJ Simpson goes, right this way. You're covered in blood. I know. I came here to visit, and I saw them, and I tried to pick them up, see if I could resuscitate them, see if they if they were alive. So I got, yes, I did get some of their blood on me. Oh, by the way, there's a knife. Don't touch it. I'm sorry. I'm my printer on it now. Oh, God. Is this your knife? No, I don't know whose knife this is. Now, I hope it's not a knife that, it's engraved to OJ from your friends and the set frogmen. You know, who knows? This guy's so stupid. But if he said, sir, you're covered in blood. I know. I called you. I I, I, I said that because I, I was here. What about the knife? Again, it's me. How about your, your footprints? Are, do, do, you, do you not see me here? I, I Yes, I'm here and I'm covered in blood because I found these people. That would have been the end of it. Good luck. Good luck. Robert Blake, oh, that was a good one, too. That was a good one, too. That one was, was a bit more, that's what, that, 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 what got him in trouble was the way they parked way down. Remember, she was a grifter. He always went to the steakhouse all the time, and he always did valet parking all the time so he could walk in. But this night, he parks way down where nobody's around, and she's there by himself, herself, and... People don't ever plan murders. They obviously don't. They don't think about it. They don't think, uh, because the first thing is, how do I get away? What's my story? What's the mode of death? What, what is it going to be? What? It, th this was not premeditated. This, this just happened. But let me also tell you, again, when you were a citizen, the only thing you had to do was either call talk radio, talk to a friend, and watch TV. Watch TV, listen to the radio, that's it. Your opinion may not... Today, you can go on 20 different sites. You can talk. You can go on X or Rumble or YouTube or there's a Bumble. A bitch, a bitch. You can go on platform after platform. You go to Court TV, you go to Nancy Grace. You can do this one. You go to Megyn Kelly. You can go you, whatever, wherever you want to go. And you're overwhelmed with it. In my day, it was one. It was us here at 8 o'clock. And then this one was, you had to wait. And then maybe somebody, and then other people said, oh, I don't care about O.J. Simpson. Really? It was, it, it, was, it was so perfect. And we knew more. Listen to what I'm saying. We knew more. We knew more about what was going on than we do now. We knew more. That is, the, that is to me the irony of ironies. One of the funniest things. And O.J. Simpson, by the way, if you did, if he did not do this or whatever, he would be one of the most charming people. People liked him. He was absolutely one of the most um, lovable kind of people who, for whatever reason, decided he was going to destroy his life. And put it this way. White America really had nothing to do with him. 
And black Americans said, okay, thanks. You're acquitted. What about me? Nah, it's okay. You were never really a part of us, and we were never a part of We just wanted you to win so that the LAPD would be made to look stupid. That's all. That's all. Remember, during the, the trial in Santa Monica, I was there for that one, and OJ said, hey, what about those size 12 shoes? Those ugly-ass Bruno Mali shoes. Those ugly-ass Bruno Mali shoes. What about those? Well, what about those? Interesting. He said, I'll never wear those. You'll never meet. I don't wear those shoes. I don't. Know. And of course, the first, the people at Bergdorf remembers when she bought them. And she says, I don't own those shoes. I don't know what you're talking about. And they're in Santa Monica in the courtroom. I think his name was John Kelly, represented the family. And they had a, a, a program from the Bills. It was a Bills day or something. It was a picture of OJ walking out with Nicole. And he was, of course, waving. And guess what shoes he's got on? Ta -da! And he says, you mean those ugly ass shoes? Well, I... And he just caught himself up in lie after lie. Nobody believed him. He was found liable, as he was. It was a lower burden, but still nonetheless. So he did it. He killed them. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no there's no doubt. But if you are prone to go, well, you know, perhaps there was some cross-contamination. Okay, Dershowitz. If you think, honestly, if you think that somehow they planted this blood, <laughs> be my guest. I don't give a damn if they found surfactant on it. I don't give a damn if they found, I, I don't care. It's ridiculous. So let's say, okay. Remember OJ said, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to find out who did. I think he had like an 800 number. Remember, he set up an 800 number and people started calling immediately. He says, yes, is this the number to call for the, re yes, for the reward? Yes, you're offering a reward. How much again? If you, for information on who killed, oh, that's easy. You did click. This happened over and over. So they just shut that down. He actually said this with a straight face. He should have just gone away. But no, we had to write, if I did it. Why would you even do that? And imagine what your kids think of you. And imagine what your... Those were good days. But Orenthal James Simpson is no longer with us. Eerie, those things recently. He says, I'm not in hospice. What are you talking about? Apparently, this, this prostate cancer was very aggressive and very fast, which made me think, whoa. I don't know about that. I mean, what do I know? I'm not a doctor. Wasn't this fun, dear friends? Wasn't this fun? Didn't you absolutely love this? I loved it. Johnny Wolf, thank you. John McGuire, couldn't get higher. Julianne from London, bless your heart. Johnny Mass, Norma Lutz or Lutz, depending upon where you're from. And Mower Man, God bless yous, you wonderful people. Thank yous for that. Let me also remind you, dear friends, that Mrs. L's channel, I want you I want you to do it. I want you to listen to me carefully. And I want you to go and I want you to sign up and I want you to 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 um, subscribe to Lynn's Warriors on YouTube. That's this one, Lynn's Warriors. Please. It's a great channel. She's the greatest woman I've ever known. And I would consider it an honor if you followed her and become smarter. Also, don't forget the Lionel Legal channel as well, where I'll be going back and forth and doing things from a more legal point of view to this. Those were great days, my friends. I wish we knew each other then. I wish you could have been a part of that. I wish you could have been 30 years ago. I was 35 years old. It's a long time ago. I know so much more now. Oh, my God. I know so much more now. More than you could ever imagine. I'm wiser now. I've got better judgment. I also trust people even less, but I'm so much better off. And that's one thing you will find, I think, at least, I don't know about you, but I think as we advance through this, whatever this thing called life is, I think we kind of learn more stuff. So in any event, thank you. 
Thank you all, dear, dear friends. We might pick up on this tomorrow. By the way, follow me here. Got some good uh, OJ stuff coming up. Did a nice little piece today. Make sure you go through all of our videos and check those out and make sure you remain subscribed to what we're doing. All right, dear friends, have a great and a glorious night. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. And I tell them, I, I again, I always say, as my valedictory, as my adios, as my sayonara, the monkey's dead, the show's over. Sue you. Da, da.